Welcome to the Bigfoot Society. In this episode from the archives, I welcome Gabe Rossi to share his encounters from Indiana and Georgia. If you've experienced something similar or have more information regarding Bigfoot or other cryptids in the same areas, please reach out immediately to me after this episode. And if you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, please contact me directly at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Also, make sure you check out patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society, where you can become a member and get extra episodes every single week. And now, on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, I've got the privilege of talking to Mr. Gabe Rossi today from northern Georgia. Ran into Gabe on Facebook a few days back, and he said he's got some interesting stories to share of his time out in the woods and things he's experienced. How's it going tonight, Gabe? Going really well. This is new for me. I've never done anything like this before, so bear with me. All right. Well, Gabe, I'll have you start the story where you would like to. All right. I guess give a little bit of background. The area where a lot of these experiences are happening, which they're still happening today from what I understand, we're in northern Indiana is where the majority of my experiences took place while scouting for deer and deer hunting. So I guess the first time I was, it was me and my ex-wife and my two kids were on a nature trail. There's a three, 3,000 acre public land close to where we lived. So we would go and we would walk through the nature trail and it's a pretty extensive nature trail. Probably takes an hour or so to walk through it. It's just a big loop. And we get to the bottom uh, it goes down a hill and goes around and it's really thick and dense. And I, we get to the bottom and I felt like something was watching me. I just, I, I didn't feel like we were alone. So I stopped and I pulled my binoculars out and I had them go on and I start looking and I, I can't see anything, but I still have this feeling. I've been in the woods a long time my, from the time I was a kid and I know when something's not right and something wasn't right. So I sent them on ahead and I, I stayed down there for a little bit and I kept looking around and glassing and still didn't see anything. So I, I caught back up with them and it, it, the feeling get, got worse and worse. And I told my ex-wife, I said, just go take the girls and just go. At this point, I'm freaking out. I hadn't seen anything. I hadn't heard anything, but the feeling. So we get up to the vehicle, we get up to our car, and there is the most horrendous smell I've ever smelled in my life. And her and I looked at each other, and she says, what is that? And I just said, you know what that is. And that was my first experience there. And <laughs> I, I would say probably, well, 2008 was when I had my eye opener. I was, I'd set my tree stand up. I was, went out and did some scouting for deer season. And I had set my tree stand up on the corner of a creek and a swamp. And I was out one morning and my, my stand was like 20 feet in the air. And my ex-wife was in a, a blind, probably 50 to 75 yards behind me. I had her tucked back up in, in this blind and it was probably right around sunrise and I hit my butt grunt and I heard something splash on the other side of the swamp and I could hear it coming through the swamp and I, I, I wasn't thinking anything else but deer. So I can hear it. I can hear it coming through the swamp. And I'm like, all right. So I'm, I'm getting ready. And I hear it come out of the swamp. And I can hear a bunch of rustling in the, there's a real dense thicket, probably 40 yards away from me. And you, you can't see into this thicket. It's so thick. And I hit my grunt again and it, it stopped. And that's when I heard something hit the ground and roll past me. And I'm like, what the heck was that? 
Yeah, I, I, I just blanked it out and I'm like, all right, there's a deer in there. So I hit my ground again. Sure enough, here's, it happened again. I couldn't see, but I could hear it hit the ground and roll past me in the leaves. So daybreak came and no, I didn't see anything else. Nothing else happened. It, it was just calm and quiet after that. There were, and when I say calm, the birds didn't wake up that morning. It was so eerily calm in the woods that morning that two days later, I went and moved my stand. I just, I didn't want anything to do with that area. I just, I got out of there. As a hunter, it was so off-putting to you that you actually moved to a different hunting area. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, because after all that happened, it, it, in the heat of the moment, I was like, oh, that's, that's a deer. But the next, well, later on that afternoon, I was like, wait a minute. Deer don't have hands. Something threw something at us. That's when it started. everything started to run through my head. And I was like, oh, wow. That's when it, it all started to click. And I, I, yeah, I moved my stand after that. And even to this day, I have not gone back into that area to this day. Have you looked to see if there's been sightings in that area that you were? See, that's the thing. When I had my sighting, when I actually had my sighting, when I actually saw one, it was in that area. Okay. So, yeah. And then there were two years. Well, I've been down here for two years. So three years ago, there was, there were actually two sightings in the same day, about 20 minutes apart in that area. And growing up in that area, my mom had, had told me stories, but you're a kid and you're like, yeah, okay, whatever. You don't really think much about it. But then as you get older and unexplainable things start happening, you, 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 you just, you, I'm not the type of person that just says, oh, this is what it is. I try to look for what it can't be first. And then I go for what I try to think of what it could be. And in these experiences, there's only certain things that it could be. Because Northern Indiana, where I'm from, we don't have bears. So it, if you see something that big, it's not a bear. They're not there. So it's kind of where, and, and as far as tree structures and, oh, I have found so much up there. And down here even. I, every, down here in northern Georgia, my girlfriend and I, we like to hike a lot up in the mountains. And we have found so much stuff. And, and and it's just right on the trails. But when, when I look for this stuff, when I, I notice, I don't really look for it, but I notice it. And some of it could be human, but then you start thinking, it's like, all right, you've got broken branches 15 feet off the ground. Who's going to climb up a tree and break branches 15 feet off the ground? So when you say you know, broken branches, describe that to me a, a little bit. So are you see are these massive branches that are, are broken or small guys or? Oh yeah, these are probably three four inches around, and they're just broken and just hanging there. Yeah, there's tree structures, tree bends, and, and the, the, what I take these as is their markers for people to stay on the trails. They've come. They, I feel that they've come to they're not okay with people being there but they've accepted it as long as you stay on the trail and some of these trails there was one it was I'm trying to think I think it was around the New Year's of 2021 it was my first winter down here and her and I we decided to go on a hike and it, it's a quarter mile hike pretty dense area back to a waterfall it's you get to this waterfall and it looks like something out of indiana jones it's really really cool and we're 
we're just checking things out and walking around and just looking at things and checking out the waterfall. And, and all of a sudden she looks at me and she, she says, I don't feel so good. I'm like, what do you mean? She says, uh, my head hurts. I can't think straight. I just, I feel nauseous. I said, all right, we need to go. <laughs> Cause I had a, a little bit of a feeling, but not like that. So we're not running, but we're moving at a good pace out of there. And I, she kept going and I stopped and I heard the heaviest footfalls I have ever heard in my life. And they were coming up quick behind us. So I, t- I told her, I said, just go. Whatever happens, just go, just go. Don't look back, just go. And I grabbed, we always take fruit and stuff with us on our hikes. I grabbed a, an apple out of her backpack and I threw it back behind me and we just took off. And I, we went about another 15, 20 yards and I stopped and everything, the footfalls had stopped and everything was quiet. So I don't know if it took the apple as an offering or what, but, and the further we got away from that waterfall area, the better she started feeling. I don't know. Take that for what it is, but I know what it was. Sounds like you could almost have been dealing with an infrasound type situation. Who knows? Yeah. 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 She's pretty in tune with that kind of stuff. And it's that's that was the first time it happened and it's happened a couple of times since but not to that extent so there was another hike we were on we were going to hike to a waterfall and the trail just just disappeared we're hiking we're looking for trail markers and it's just gone and we're, we're hiking right next to a, a river a creek and we're like you know what this looks like a good place to stop I usually take a cigar and I'll light up a cigar and I'll sit on, sit there and smoke a cigar and just chill. And she'll go walk around in the water in the Creek and do, do her thing. And we just enjoy nature. She was on the other side of the Creek and <sighs> this kind of gave me chills, but I'm sitting there and I hear this low, low guttural grumble, like a growl. And the funny thing was, she's on the other side of the creek, and this is where it came from. And it's real thick, and the mountain goes straight up on the other side. And she stopped what she was doing, and she looked at me from across the creek, and we looked at each other, and we're like, just staring at each other for a few seconds, and then we heard it again. And she just stopped, and she just sat there for a second. Then the, I don't, I don't know how you want to put it, I think it was cool. But we heard two of them chattering back and forth to each other, real soft, real low. And she said she could hear them in her head. But she, you, you, you couldn't make out what they were saying. Can you describe it, if it sounded like anything similar at all any description of what that language sounded like it was just chatter almost like a deep squirrel chatter almost does that make sense i I don't know how else to describe it it wasn't you could hear the voices change and, and fluctuate but you couldn't make out any words gabe have you ever heard the sierra sounds yes and it sounded nothing like that. Okay. I didn't want to put it into the story, but I want to bring it in just as was it like that or was it not? Okay. So it wasn't like that at all. Interesting. No, I, she, her and I both feel that it, it may have been a couple of juveniles that were just checking us out and trying to figure out what we were doing there because we weren't causing any problems. We weren't doing anything goofy. They were just trying, they were just, Feeling us out is how we feel about it. Now, is this situation here, is this in Georgia or is it in Indiana? Yeah, yeah this was in Georgia. Okay. Yeah. Have there been many sightings in that area that you were in? Yes. Yeah. That was, that's up. I don't really want to give the area because 
But because I, I don't know, I just want to leave them alone, let them do their thing. If I say where it was, and there's potential that everybody could go up there. Oh yeah, that's no problem. I respect you for that. You don't want to. We don't want to mess with them for sure and keep them oh, safe in their habitat. No. Yeah, and then uh, I had in Indiana. I had my first sighting. And that was that was crazy. I was doing some scouting, on, and I had a golf cart that I was going. All these that three thousand acres that I hunted was uh, dirt roads going down, going through it. And there's fire lanes. The park rangers had cut fire lanes through the CRP grass every 50 yards or so. And they'd go from the road all the way to the wood line. And then they would go around just basically to make it so people can get to where they need to go. And so they can get in and they can check for fallen trees and stuff like that. Basically access roads, but they, they stay out of there unless they absolutely have to go in there. But I was looking, I was going down the main drag and I looked to my left down one of the fire lanes. Like I always did. I was always looking for deer and I, it was about a hundred yards away. And it was massive. It was uh, at least seven and a half feet tall at the shoulders. And it was about two and a half to three feet thickness of the chest. Because it was walking across that fire lane as I went by. We were going the same way. And I hit the brakes and I backed up and it was gone. But like I said before, there's no bears in Indiana. So something that big is not a bear. And that was the same area that they had a couple, just a couple of years ago, they had two reportings in the same day and it was Brown. It was a dark reddish Brown color. It was getting close to dark. It was still plenty of daylight, but it was, the sun was starting to set. But yeah, that's when I had my, my first sighting. Did you notice anything about it? It's head at all or it's face or is it just a very quick sighting? It was just a very quick, the fire lanes are only 10 feet wide. So it was probably two strides step and then step and it was gone. Hmm. But like I said, something that big can only be one thing in our area because we don't have any bears. Do you remember anything about how it was holding its arms when it was crossing? It was, its right arm was back, and I could make out some of the fur on the sides. It was, it was pretty long hair. Yeah. Wow. Male or female? Any indication on that? I have no idea. Okay. All I know, it was big. Mm. And here, in this is, some people are going to think I'm crazy for this, but The area that I lived was probably a mile and a half from all this. And there was a swamp that was connected to it. And my ex-wife at the time, she was very skeptical. And it was about 11 o'clock one night and she was out on the porch. And she comes back inside and she says, you need to come out here and listen to this. And I'm like, all right. So I go outside and I can hear screams. There were screams coming from the swamp, and the swamp is connected to this hunting preserve. And shortly after I had that sighting, I was sitting in my living room, and about 10 feet up the wall on the outside, I heard, wham, something hit the, hit, hit the side of my house. This happened two different times at about 2 30, 3 o'clock in, in the morning when I was sitting up watching TV. Now, 10, 10 feet off the ground, I, and it just, it, I don't know. I personally think that after that they knew I saw it and they were letting me know that they knew, that's what I think, but I don't know. That freaked me out. 
how did that make you feel to know that you see the guy in the swamp, the big boy in the swamp, yeah. and you live a mile away from that? How did that make you feel as a homeowner? No, it didn't bother me. Oh. I mean, I, I've got guns. I, All right. <laughs> I'm on the teeth, so, I mean, I, I'll protect myself if need be, but All right. it was eye-opening, to say the least. Was that the same it after be? it uh, hit the side of your house with that? the big boulder or anything like that? He still felt the same way? It was his hand. I think it was oh. just a slap. It was just a slap on the side of the, the house. Just, just letting me know when it happened, it happened twice. That's even wilder so, Gabe, because they could have been outside listening. And then all of a sudden they're like, all right, time to give him the warning. And there's slam slap. Uh, yeah. Is that why you left that area? No. And we won't get because don't feel like you have to get into why, but I was just curious if they were related. Oh, no. Okay. No, that, that, but yeah, there's, I, I've seen, I've found a lot, like I said, a lot of tree structures, a lot of tree bends, just some crazy things out there. <laughs> now, I want to go back to, let's go back to that night when your ex. I believe your ex-wife says to come out, listen to this scream. Yeah. Can you describe mm -hmm. uh, in any way what that scream was like, if you've ever heard anything like it or what it reminded you of? I, it, it sounded like a woman, like mm -hmm. a woman being tortured. It was just a, a loud, high-pitched scream. And I mean, it, it, it made my skin crawl when I heard it. And after that, I we don't have we do have bobcats, but they're not very prevalent. And I pulled up a fox, and a fox was close, but not close enough. Mm. And I, I I've never heard anything like it before in my life. So I, as far as that goes, I, I think it could only be one thing because it was it was loud. It was. So loud. I've never heard anything so loud in my life. And that's the difference, right? That's what I usually hear is that it sounded this one way, but the thing was, is that no other creature could make the sound that loud. It would need to have a huge diaphragm, a huge set of lungs behind it in order to do that. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> and if it would have been a fox, it would have been muffled because it would have been on the ground. Mm. in in underbrush thicket this wasn't you could tell this was booming is that the only time that you heard vocalizations around that property that main time with the screaming yeah. okay yeah that was that was the only time i had heard that there <sighs> yeah and then the chattering down here in georgia which was pretty intense that was crazy that's a lot, Gabe, that you definitely have gone through some stuff. That area with the chattering and everything in Georgia, because you're still down there. Do you ever go yeah. back to that area? We're, we're planning on it. We're planning on going back. We haven't really? been back since. Yeah, because we, we try to hike. When we go on these hikes, we look for hikes that are out of the way. They're, it, it, we have all trails app. And we pull it up, and if it says you may encounter a lot of people on this, it's a very popular trail, we avoid those. We don't like them. We go to the ones that say, this is not a very popular trail. You probably won't see anyone. And when we go on these trails, we don't see anybody. So they're not – some of them are pretty much goat paths that you have to uh, try to find your way through. And luckily, I have enough experience with finding game trails that I can – I can keep finding the path. So that's pretty helpful on some of these. And some of the things that we found on these trails, like I think I sent you a picture of the handprint. Did I send that to you? I believe you did, yes. And the footprint, we found a footprint. Yep. I found two footprints, a handprint, all, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it... <laughs> Now, and, I'm and looking at them right now, actually, Gabe, and the handprint is interesting because it's almost like something 
put its hand on top of some moss and you can just see where it dragged down and just dragged yeah. the moss away. And that's going up the side of a mountain. She actually, Is it? that's actually her hand. Yeah, that's my girlfriend's hand. And she took the picture. She's the one that found it. Yeah. Man. She said here, she's, I think she's wanting to, she's wanting to tell some of her stuff too. <laughs> oh, she there with you? Yeah. All right, let's let's get her on then. All right, here she is. Hi there. My name is Tamara. Hi, Tamara. And hi there. I've been I, I actually Gabe and I grew up together in Indiana, but I moved to Georgia in two thousand one. He didn't move down to Georgia until twenty twenty one. So I've been here for quite a long time. I started hiking in 2019, so I'm just hitting that five-year anniversary of, of being a hiker. Uh, I always hike alone. I hike by myself. I really enjoy just being in nature, being out by myself, being alone. Uh, a lot of people, this, I really don't care what people think. There's different opinions on it, but I do practice grounding. Other people call it earthing. Or physically just take your shoes and your socks off and you actually connect with the earth. I do that on every hike. I'm, I do this in water. If there's water, I'm getting in the water. But I've been doing this alone up until Gabe came down here. I've been hiking alone. So I've taken him back to trails that I'd been on before. And it's funny because I've never really, I've heard just being in the North Georgia area, there's the Bigfoot Museum up here. And I've heard other oh, sightings, there's this, there's that. I just thought I haven't actually seen it with my own eyes so I don't believe and I do not believe but I just I didn't really have an opinion of it um there was one particular trail that I was on and this is like he said I'll use the all trails app I, I'd like to go where there's no other people I had made it all the way into this trail it was about a f maybe four and a half five miles in it was during the summer made it to the waterfall I was coming on my way back and I needed to just pretty much get off the trail and I had to pee. So I looked and I'm like, okay, there's a boulder right there. I'm going to get off this trail. Of course, it's summertime. The grass is almost knee high. Got off the trail, maybe 10 feet behind this boulder and went to get back up. And all of a sudden I was just afraid. I consider myself pretty fearless and brave. Nothing scares me. I'm not afraid to be in the woods at night. I'm not afraid to be alone. I I grew up in the country in Indiana. I used to sleep outside. I'm really not a paranoid or feel fearful person. So this particular day, and it was funny, it wasn't until a few years later talking to him about it, but I was just all of a sudden just very disoriented. I couldn't think straight. I was terrified. I was paranoid. I felt, I didn't feel like I was lost, but I felt like something was trying to get me, which is, it's not my character. I'm very clear headed. I'm a rational thinker. I could not find the trail. And I knew that there was this boulder and it was 10 feet this way. And it probably took me 20 minutes to get back on this trail. And my ears were ringing and I was just very confused and my thoughts were foggy and I couldn't think straight. And I almost felt like I, I was drugged. It was, it's, it's really a hard feeling to describe. And just between being confused and being panicked at the same time, it just took me a very long time to get back on the trail. And I just, what got me there was like, go back to where you hear water because I had followed, I had followed a, a river going in and I finally got back on it and just started running and running. And I ran for a good mile and I, I finally started getting a, a more of a clear head on my way out. And I was like, ah, you just got lost. You got paranoid. You went into kind of fight or flight mode. Fast forward a couple of years later, I take him back to the same trail and I'm like, this is the trail that messed me up. And <laughs> is you remember that one it, it looked like a war zone yeah i will say this is i can say this is pretty much a lot of this takes place up in the chattahoochee oconee national forest which 
I don't know if you know this area, but it spans a big part of the North Georgia. The Appalachian Trail is part of it. So there's so many areas to hike. It's just a vast forest system. I take him on this trail, and as soon as we get in there, he's, okay, look at this. And I, I remember seeing these things, but not thinking anything of it. When we say tree breaks and tree bends, we're talking trees that are broken. You've got one side of the mountain going up, and you think, okay, if a storm came through and the wind blows, you would think that a tree was going to fall towards down towards gravity, but they're broken in the other way. And some of them are, are twisted. They're young trees, but they're bigger around than my arm or my calf. And they're really high up and they're bent and twisted almost strategically. And some of them are bent down where they're, they're twisted together and form a structure. And you're thinking, okay, my mind automatically goes to how could this have naturally happened? Could this tree have fallen and knocked this tree over? And so I always try to just ration it out and think, how could this have naturally happened? And honestly, we've got so many pictures and video stuff. If it weren't for him coming down and explaining all this to me and showing me this, now this is what I'm looking for. And I'm seeing a lot of stuff that makes me question, you know, just question the, the, everything. And I've found one of the footprints. I've found one of the handprints. I've heard the noises from the story he was telling you about when we were, we had stopped in a creek and he was smoking his cigar. I actually was in the water practicing grounding. It's you just, I submerge myself in water. It's almost a form of meditation. And I could hear those voices too. And I heard the, I do remember him hearing, like he said, I heard the one. And it just sounded like this low rumbling growl. It didn't sound like words. It didn't sound like, I know what bears sound like. I've seen bears. I know what feral hogs sound like. I haven't seen them. I don't want to see them. I've seen their tracks and then I'll turn around and go the other way. But I know what all the animals of these forests look like and sound like. Um, it didn't sound like any animal I've ever heard. Do you feel that there were two individuals talking to each other or did it sound just like just one individual? No, there were two. Uh, Yeah, there there were multiple ones. And it was crazy because I'm sitting in the water and looking back, you think that would make me just really freak out. I'm hearing this and I was, I remember because I was on a small waterfall and I was kind of, I think I was laying on my stomach. Was I laying on my stomach? I was just letting the water flow over me. And I stopped and I just looked at him and he's looking at me and I could hear them. And and at first I thought, I can only hear this in my head. And I wonder if he can hear this too. And he could. And I could hear from, from one side, the chatter. And then I would hear a voice from way on the other side, it was a different voice. It sounded like the same form of communication. It seemed like the same, I don't want to use the word animal, but the same being. But it, it wasn't words that were making out. It just it was just an indistinct kind of chatter. But the feeling that I got, when I say I could feel them in, in my head, which sounds really weird. I know it sounds strange, but I'm just going to just come out and say it. I just, I felt like they were just, um, I didn't feel like we were in danger. And I told him that I told Gabe that I said, they're curious about me and what I'm doing because I was meditating. I was doing grounding and I said, they were just, they're just curious and they seemed surprised to me. That's, I just, I felt that feeling like I could almost pick up an emotion and I don't know. It was just a really weird experience. It's nothing I'd ever experienced before, but it wasn't negative like where I was afraid and disoriented and confused. And it it wasn't like that at all. I felt like I wasn't in any harm that I wasn't going to be harmed. I felt like it was okay. I just felt like they were like I caught whoever it was off guard and they were just very curious. So but still, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get out of this water and get dried off and just keep on hiking. Let's go on, go on ahead and get on out of here. Um, so that was that was one experience. And 
it was really interesting. It wasn't a negative one, but. That was last fall. Yeah, that was last fall. And Tamara, when you've been out hiking, have you experienced or heard any other type of vocalizations? Or is that the main time that you actually heard something when you were out there? This was the first vocalization that I had heard. And I try to be very quiet when I'm out and about. I don't hike with groups or any of the touristy crowded areas, but I had never heard a vocalization before. So it was actually really cool to hear it. And it almost, it it didn't sound human. It didn't sound like a bear. It didn't sound, it almost sounded almost like a primate. It's just, it's so hard to describe because it's not like anything I'd ever heard before. And it didn't sound like, it sounded like it was definitely a language and not just a noise. It sounded like a foreign language, but it, it, it was just so hard to describe. It sounded almost if a primate like like a great ape or a, a, a gorilla were talking. But similar. That's the most similar I could get. It sounded a little more advanced, like their voice was, would sound like if they were talking. But they were lower in tone, and they it projected farther away. But it, it was hard because you've got the water rushing, and then you've got the mountain up, and everything bounces off. There's... A lot of rocks up in the mountains, so it's hard to tell what direction it's coming from and how far away it is, but it was very distinct. That's the only time I'd actually heard anything. I tend to several times if they, they we call they get in my head. And so now that when we hike, I'm like the Bigfoot barometer, like a <laughs> so <laughs> everyone's looking at you is do you, are you hearing anything yeah i actually don't like it because yeah. it's not cool knowing that i don't know it's when you have a good experience like that when you're getting a calming feeling like it's okay they're just curious but then there's the one where we got chased and then the one where we got chased and that was weird because i had actually got off the trail and i was just chattered on about some kind of flower that was blooming i think yeah. i was like look at and then all of a sudden i just felt like i was just drugged again and i felt disoriented and i felt sick and all of a sudden i'm like like low blood sugar or something i was like oh, i don't feel good i almost i was starting to sway a little bit and lose my balance and i i couldn't talk right and i'm like oh, i don't feel so good and then he, you know, got a bad feeling. He's like, we got to get out of here now. And we got out of there and he had to drag me. And it's crazy because if something takes over and you just lose your sense of direction and you lose your sense of control of, of logic, like you're afraid and but you're disoriented and you're stunned. But it's not a good feeling. I don't like being the... I don't like being the canary. <laughs> it's, I don't know if it's because of all the grounding that I practice and trying to be as connected to the earth as possible. Environmental hippie girl. So I'm, I tried to stay very connected to mother earth. Um, Nothing wrong with that for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's who I am. But there was another, there was a third time, wasn't there? I don't know. We've been on so many hikes, uh, kayaking on the kayak trip. Oh, wow. Yeah. I forgot about that one. Do you want to hear about the, the, the kayak? Um, I would love to I hear guess. whatever you guys have to share. So <laughs> go right ahead. That was Yeah. This was last summer. Okay. We, we were kayaking and, uh, we come up to this beach and she decided she wanted to get out and she wanted to swim a little bit in the river. Now this is in the Creek. It's the river. So she's on the other side of the river. This is the Etowah River. Yeah, the Etowah. And she's swimming, just chilling, just, just swimming, thinking around, whatever. And I'm sitting on the other side of the bank on the beach, just chilling and watching her. And she starts getting this weird feeling. And I look up, and I see one pull its head back. 
I, I not in the, it, it was just like you see a tree and then you see a lump move. That was it, like a peekaboo type thing. And then that's when she started feeling her feeling that she gets. And needless to say, after that, then she shot her back across the river and we kept on going. Like I said, I'm, I kayak a lot too. I do a lot of river cleanups I'm, where I'm pulling tires out of the rivers. I'm jumping in and out. I am not afraid to be in these rivers up in the mountains. I'm not. I'm always in them. And in this particular river, I was like walking up the edge of the banks as far as I could. And then I jump in and just float down and swim and let the current kind of take me. And I go swimming past him and I'd be like, hey, come on, come in and swim. And he just wasn't in the mood to swim. And I'm I'm not afraid to be in the water at all. So I got, I was getting close to the banks and all of a sudden I was just afraid to be in the water. And I'm like, I gotta get the hell out of here. And kind of simultaneously, he's looking at me like, we got to go. Come on. And he's waving at me. He's get out of there. Come on. We got to go. And I'm like, yeah, I'm on it. And I start swimming against the current as fast as I can. And I just all of a sudden felt like something was wrong. That same feeling that I got when I was on that hike by myself, that just something was wrong and I was disoriented again and I shouldn't have been there. And I just, I was afraid. And that's not like me. And I think in that case, we, you just got too close. And then I, I did because it didn't were, happen giving you the, until I got right. too close to that part of the, yeah. part of the banks. I don't know. And let's, the Etowah river goes through a lot of parts of, there's some pretty dense forests that no, there's not hiking trails in there. No one hikes in. We were on that part as Dawson Forest, right? Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of hiking in Dawson Forest. And like we were on that portion of the Etowah where you can be on the Etowah, but you really can't be on the Dawson Forest side. There's no hiking. They don't allow you to bank your kayak there. They don't want you to be on, to, to explore there on that side. Yeah, it was it was interesting that I just, I was fine just having a good old time floating around, messing around, swimming, and then all of a sudden, I'm just terrified for no reason whatsoever. Have there been reported sightings in that area as well? Absolutely. Um, okay. What's great about, um, and, and I can say this just by, if you go to, have you been to the, I don't know, you're out, you're in a different state. There's a Bigfoot museum, and when he moved down here, I took him here, and I had been to Blue Ridge, Georgia a million times, and I've always passed the Bigfoot Museum, and I thought it was just some touristy little gift shop with knickknacks and t-shirts and hats, but I took him there because he really wanted to go when he first moved down here, and I was blown away with all of the, the scientific evidence and the documentation, but they have a map of the state of Georgia, and they have a little pin marked of all of the sightings and all of they've got this really great library of where everyone has actually had actual sightings or experiences and i'm looking at this and i'm like holy cow this is where i hike this is where i'm at all the time like all of the heavy sightings like around the Appalachian Trail and, and the Chattahoochee Oconee area and this whole part of North Georgia that I am, that is my turf. And there's all these sightings there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this whole time I've been going here all the time by myself, alone, right here all the time. Yes, it's a very heavily active area for sightings. We went on this one trail and... The way I took it, they were the when we say when the tree breaks are almost like warnings. Don't come past this. You'll see them. It's odd. You'll see them on one side of the trail prominently and not the other. And I'm not sure you're if you're a hiker. Are you a hiker? I used to be a lot more. I I've hiked the Appalachian Trail all of Massachusetts and Connecticut. I grew up in New England, but so I okay. I have a history back in the day. Yeah. Okay. So you know how there's one side and there's the other. Sure. So when we get on when we get on these trails, some of them just right off the bat, as soon as you get on these trails, 
one side, which tends to be the side uh, um, of, of the, the side of where the elevation is going up, there's going to be all of the, the structures and the tree breaks and the tree bends. And that's where we see that. And some of them, as soon as you get on that trail, it's, and, it, and it's funny because these trails aren't the all I, I love all trails because people will complain. They'll say, I never got to the waterfall. I couldn't find it. The trail's not marked. The parking lot's not marked. The forest system is not keeping up with this trail. Those and are the ones we go to. Those are the ones we go to. And I used to, before I met him, I used to blaze the trails. I used to bring blazing equipment. I would make sure I got it marked and then I would go back and I would blaze it so other hikers wouldn't get lost. And now seeing what I'm seeing, I'm like, no, I'm going to leave this trail alone and I'm not going to blaze it and make it easy for other people to find. There's a reason the forest, the forestry doesn't keep up with it. There's a reason. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So now I'm respecting that and I'm, I've stopped blazing the trails and I'll find it and just do the best I can to find these trails and enjoy them. Yeah. Like for instance, the the one that she was talking about where she had her first infrasound. When I went on this trail, we got to this one section and it looked like it had just been ravaged. There were trees probably six to eight inches around, pulled up out of the ground, laid across the trail all the way 50 yards for 50 yards. And you couldn't find where these trees just fell over. There were no stumps. There was no root balls. There was no holes where they came from. They were picked up and put here. There's, there was, yeah, it, it, it didn't matter. And there, there was tree bends there was twisted breaks it looked like you it looked like a, a tornado or a hurricane went through there and here's the thing it was in a valley these trees were no order there was no order to it like i said you couldn't see where they fell over because that's the first thing i started doing is i started looking to see if these trees just fell over if they were broken from up top and they, they just fell down from a dead tree or whatever these weren't. These were placed here in this area. And it, it went, like I said, it went on for 50 yards. And it took us 30 minutes to walk through this at 50 yards because we had to walk over all these trees to get through this area. And it was insane. Several years ago when I had went on that trail, I took pictures and I had posted it on Facebook. And I said, oh, I've, I've got an obstacle course for a trail today. <laughs> Remember? And yeah. I took them back to it. And they were still there, and, and he's like, uh, "That's that's no." Uh, yeah, it, it was it was pretty intense. I had no idea. About it. We did. I think it had been done there. It had been done a long time ago. It wasn't anything fresh, but nonetheless, it was there. It was pretty obvious to me. But wow, that you guys have some fascinating stories. You're definitely in an area where things are going on, and Tamara. I want to. Just verify with you, you haven't had a sighting yourself yet, correct? I have not. Okay. I have a feeling one day you will, though. Yeah, I think it's inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. For, for as much as we've, that I've noticed down here, just evidence and signs, it, yeah, it's inevitable. We were one of the well, when I found my first track down here, it was odd. It was almost like it almost looked like if you there's deer tracks mixed in with tracks on the trail. And to me, it looked like they were herding deer to a, a valley because the trail kind of went around and there was a like a bowl down to the left. Or to the, if you're, anyways, it looked like they were running down the trail, herding deer to one massive area. Because then all of a sudden the tracks, the footprints stopped and then the deer tracks went right down into this bowl and then that was it. And it, you could see where the leaves were tore up, 
You could see dirt torn up. It, it just, it, it looked pretty torn up. And you could see on the side of the trail where it looked like a foot was sliding down the side of the trail about every 10 feet. Not to be too descriptive, but uh, in that area, did you find any bones or or Here's the thing. anything like that? <laughs> Here's the thing. When we see signs and tree breaks and bends and stuff like that, we don't venture off the trail. I gotcha. Yeah, I, yeah I'm not going to push my luck. We're because the trails that we're on, we're five five miles away from the road, the paved road. At some point, okay. So you're in very so, remote areas too. I I don't yeah. want to get stuck out there. Yeah, but you put your phone up and it's there's nothing. Wow. So when it, when we see stuff like that, we just stick to the trail, and we'll observe and look and. But as far as getting off the trail, no, nah, it ain't happening. Mm. I, I, I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Gabe and Tamara, this has been a super fun chat. I, I know it's getting late where you guys are at because you're ahead of me. But man, I feel like I might be talking to you. I feel like you guys are going to have some more situations come up in the future. So I think we need to definitely keep in touch. If anything else happens, let me know, Gabe. Absolutely. Yeah. Bef- I, got, I got plenty more from Indiana. <laughs> oh, you do? Oh, my goodness. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> You're killing me, Gabe. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're yeah. going to have to do a, we're going to have to do a part two t- someday, man. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. This has been fun. Yeah. This, this has been a good yeah. time. I have a feeling people are going to be saying, when are you going to get, when are you going to get Gabe and Tamara back on? I appreciate you guys chatting with me tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate the uh, the opportunity. The way I see it, like I texted you earlier, the way I see it is, if I, her and I can get on here and we can tell our stories, maybe there's somebody else out there listening that's too afraid to tell their story. Maybe this will give them the courage to come out and not feel so bad about it. Who cares what anybody thinks? I know what I saw. I know what's out there. That's all I care about. just want to take a few minutes to say thank you to you, all my listeners, for listening to the podcast. Please take a minute to help out the show by subscribing on YouTube, making sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any notifications, and share the episode on YouTube with a friend. Also, if you're listening to us on a podcast, thank you so much. Make sure that you're subscribed, share the show with a friend. Really, it's all about sharing the show wherever you can. If you've had a Bigfoot encounter related to the following or know someone who has, please reach out to me at BigfootSociety at gmail.com or pass on my email. Here's a list. All right, I'm going to use this space uh, this week to announce that I'll be at the Sasquatch Summerfest in Oak Ridge, Oregon as an attender. I won't be presenting or anything, but I'll be hanging out trying to interview people that have had Bigfoot encounters. If you're from the Oak Ridge, Oregon area or surrounding and you've had a Bigfoot experience, please contact me directly, BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Also, Priscilla was nice enough that if you get your tickets through SasquatchSummerFest.com and use code BigfootSociety, you can get 50% off the cost of your tickets, which is a big amount. So uh, code BigfootSociety to get 50% off your tickets, SasquatchSummerFest.com, and uh, helps out the podcast as well. A special thank you to all the Bigfoot Society Patreon and YouTube channel members. It's your support that helps keep the show going, and I extremely appreciate it. One more thing. Okay, here's the deal. So we're at the point, guys, where it is, there's no stopping us. We are going to full-time podcast no matter what, but I need your help to get there. I figured it out, and we need approximately... 700 more people in the Patreon in order to reach our goal of going full time, uh, actually able to go to places, um, people that have been having Bigfoot activity, interview them face to face, check it out for myself, all that good stuff. If you guys can, guys, this is this is the time. If you can at any time become a supporting member of the Bigfoot Society. Go to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. I would appreciate it. It's going to help us get to the next level, uh, pretty much the final level.
You guys are amazing for listening. If you can't become a supporting member, please share this episode everywhere you can. Share it with anyone who's into Bigfoot encounters. And that means a world to me as well. Thank you all for listening. And we'll see you next time. tell our stories maybe there's somebody else out there listening that's too afraid to tell their story maybe this will give them the courage to come out and now i feel so bad about it who cares what anybody thinks i know what i saw i know what's out there that's all i care about